Well, excited any chance we get to come out here on the field and, and compete. You know, today, I would say this week is a little hybrid type of week for us as far as preparation. Uh, still focusing on NEP, but at the same time, trying to make sure our game planning and all that process, the scouting report process, uh, goes smoothly. So out here today, you'll see some overs D. Some of that stuff is carded, right? It's carded, so it's like Washington plays offensively, defensively, and also special teams. So. What does that mean from a reps and depth chart perspective? Uh, that's why I said it's a hybrid of training camp and evaluation and also getting ready for the regular season. So, you know, everything's evaluated. Even the scout team uh, reps are evaluated. So we want those guys to give a good look. At the same time, we're still evaluating those guys. That work on Cincy as well? Or more so just focus on Washington? Uh, there's a little work on, on Cincy. Um, but, you know, as I said earlier, it's still training camp for us. And it's about getting us better and us on the same page. We can't, you know, we can't win games until we figure out what we're doing. And that's the goal. You mentioned that everyone who's healthy will play. Is there any um, thought process into how much time the quarterbacks will get? And, like, you know, similar to, will it, will it be similar to game two or a little different? Um, it'll be a little different. Uh, I want to keep that close to the vest, though. But, look, all the quarterbacks will play in the game. Jordan, with uh, Kendrick Bourne and Sion Takitaki, is this a situation where you expect them to start the season on the pup list? Or do you anticipate one of those or both those guys being back? You know, when those guys are ready to come back, um, they'll be out here practicing. And that's the you know, that's the hard part. I don't like to put time limits or deadlines on it. It's when they're ready to play and we get, you know, we get them from the weightlifting staff and also uh, Jim Whale and his staff, then we'll go with it. What is, uh, what is, oh, no. It's, it's him again. It's the same one. It's the same one. I know. I was going to ask you. So you guys have been here the whole camp. It's you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, it right is. by you. It's you. God damn it. <laughs> Pause the interview. We got to kill this thing. No, we do not kill bees or anything else. Yeah, thanks. Josh Uche has kind of had a curious camp, worked off to the side, hasn't been available for some of the days. Is, yep. is this something from the offseason? Is something that happened during the spring or in the summer here? Uh, it's something that happened during the summer. It's, I mean, I don't think it's major, but, you know, put him in the bucket once he's ready, he'll go. Uh, he is dealing with something, though on the same lines with Marte Tamapu. We saw him like first day, I want to say. Yep. Not much since. We're, we're, what can you tell us context-wise, what, what his situation is? Yeah, you know, he's one of those guys who, I mean, I would love to say day-to-day, -day, but we're probably talking weeks, weeks, week to week. Um, I'm sure no one ever said that before to you guys, <laughs> but uh, week to week. Gerard, uh, heard a few people say this summer that you don't like the term players coach. Yeah. Why is that? I just think I'm a... Uh, I think I'm going to be a great coach and whether you want to call it, whatever you want to label it as, I mean, more power to you. It's the same thing. I, you know, when people say, well, you, you know, it was a black coach. No, I want to be a good coach first. That happens to be black. That's kind of how I see it. I happen to be a player at one point in time. How do you think that manifests itself in the way you conducted a training camp this summer? I mean, as far as this wasn't a team that gave a lot of veteran days off and yeah. things like that. Yeah, because we just have to get better. You know, coming off of last year, it kept a bad taste in our mouths. Uh, we still have a lot of players that returned from then. Um, and and I, was, I would say, you know, they want to work. And that's the most exciting thing for me. They want to be out here in pads. They want to do live drills and things like that. So uh, that's our goal is to be better, uh, be a better team this year. What is the plan with, with uh, Drake this week to have him run some of the no, he'll be focused more on Patriot stuff, and he'll be focused more on Washington stuff. Quite frankly, what do you want to see from the quarterbacks, Drake and Jacoby in particular this week? Yeah, I think it starts with the operation. I always say, you know, good huddle, good break, good play, and so it starts in the huddle, then getting guys lined up and going out there executing the play. You know, making the right reads and and moving the offense down the field. When it comes to that pre-snap operation for Drake May, is he in a place where if he had to start, you feel like he's ready, or do you feel like he's still kind of coming along? 100%, I think he's ready to, to run a huddle. You were very blunt in your assessment of the offensive line in the wake of the Philadelphia preseason game. How do you feel they've responded over the last couple of days? Yeah, they've responded well. And, and I will say, you know, going back and looking at the film, the practice, I got that. But if you were to look at the whole body of work with our offensive line, they, they've done a good job, and they're getting better going forward. Between joint practices, preseason games, how many snaps do you need to see from a guy to say, I want him on my team? Is there a set number in your mind? No, not really in my mind. I think, you know, you just want people that love football and that will do everything as far as preparation in the weight room, in the classroom to get on the field. Those are the guys that I really want. And I'll take a less talented guy that just loves the game of football and you know he's going to get better with a high ceiling than a player who's just, you know, blessed with a lot of athleticism but is lazy. So that's uh, kind of how I look at it. We talked about the offensive line that just mentioned. Layden Robinson, we've seen work in a little bit more with the, I guess, the ones in theory. Um, I hate when you say that. I know. Uh, that's why I put it in quotation marks. <laughs> um, is it because of just how he's playing, or is it something that you're seeing from City? It seems 
that's sort of no, a competition. No, I will say, you know, it is a competition. I would say, you know, he's strung, you know, a few weeks together here. And, and that's the thing. I, I told these guys at the beginning of camp, there are more people in this room than there are jobs. And so either you're going to hold on to your job or someone's going to take your job. And I would say all those guys have been battling. So it's going to be a tough decision. I asked my the ladies first. There you go, thanks. Such a gentleman. Um, I asked um, uh, Michael Wenu right after the first game, or that second game, if there was any plans of moving to tackle, and he said he's just been told he's at guard for right now. But then we've just on work at some tackle yeah. this week. Uh, what's kind of the plan there? I, I would say, look, we always as coaches reserve the right to change our mind, and I don't want that to get, you know, misconstrued any type of way. But you know, that was the plan initially, and then you know, as we continue to build depth amongst the offensive line, we had to move those guys around. Does that have any Robinson, as you said, stringing some weeks together. That uh, no, it has everything to do with us just trying to find the right combination. Bobby. Bobby. No. Oh yeah, sorry. Hey, yeah, you're right. Like, I really appreciate it. You're such a gentleman. Yeah, it's a real pro. <laughs> you brought in several players yesterday, a couple linebackers, wide receiver. What's the thought process behind that at this stage of camp? Yeah, there, there's no better you know, evaluation tools and getting guys out here 11 v 11 and seeing what they can do. You know, we're kind of limited during the season to have, you know, guys out there because it's just a workout in the bubble. And so uh, the thought process was, look, bring in some players that we've identified as being, you know, potential candidates to be on our team and to see what they have. I know guys are different for different guys and time of year figures into it as well, but do you anticipate making cuts or the, the bulk of your cuts on Tuesday, maybe a little bit before? What's the, um, how's that time? You know, you know, that's a, a conversation that Elliot and I have had. We've gone back and forth on how to really uh, do that. What I will say is, you know, when you play a Sunday night game compared to a Thursday night game, you kind of get, you know, tight on time. And so we'll have those discussions here and also on the road before the game. Gerard, with those cuts looming, who, who has the final say uh, to make those cuts between you and Elliot? Yeah, I, I thought I was pretty clear about this is, and. You know, for me, Elliot and I are on the same page. I hope it's always that way. You've heard, you know, the horror stories around the league as far as coach and GM uh, relationships are concerned. The final say so is Elliot. We collaborate on everything. He, I mean, we collaborate. He collaborates on a little bit of scheme things. I collaborate with him as far as evaluation. But I lean on the experts in that world, and Elliot is that guy. Do you need to come out of Sunday night with a, a, a starting quarterback in, in your mind, and do you need to tell them? that early or what is your plan for that? I would say by Monday night, we should know who the quarterback is. You know, Sunday night game, it's always hard to really crank through the film, you know, especially on the road. But I think Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, we probably need to know who it is. Now, that doesn't mean I'll tell you on Monday or Tuesday, right. but no. At that defensive <laughs> tackle spot where you had Christian Barmore, we talked about Farms in the preseason opener, have seemed pretty active, yep. God chow. Who else? Anyone else in there that, that's catching your eye at that defensive tackle spot inside? Well, you, I mean, you can you can throw Dan in there as well. He's that's one of right. these guys who, you know, he's a penetrator. Um, we know exactly what he is, and he's a good player for us. And we also have guys on the perimeter, on the outside, I would say, that can slide inside uh, on third down. So those are all things that, that we've thought through. In terms of the starting quarterback decision, would you say that you have final say with that, or is that another thing where Elliot... I mean, the players that go on the field, I would think I would have final say. But right. uh, once again, I know I've used this word a lot. We will collaborate on that. Um, I want to ask you about the starting quarterback a little bit more. I'm sorry. I know that's a big Keep problem, going. But um, one thing that I want to bring up is that at the beginning of the spring, you were very um, forward about that Jacoby's your starter, Jacoby's your starter. But there's been a shift after this last game where it's up in the air. It's a big competition. Has that taken you by surprise a little bit with how things have gone? What has led to that? Uh, not really. You know, I would say, you know, you come into camp and you want to have an idea of how, you know, how it's going. It's still a competition and Jacoby is still QB1. It's a competition amongst all the guys on the field, including the quarterback spot. So, you know, hopefully that, you know, kind of makes sense to you guys, but he's still, he's still QB1. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to talk to ADP tomorrow. Uh, maybe a good time to check in with you just on how that dynamic with you and AVP is going. How would you describe that? It's going well. Um, you know, we're on the same page. We meet multiple times a day. Um, I have nothing but, you know, complete faith in AVP and the rest of the staff. What have you learned about him just from being around him every day in terms of what type of coach he is? Yeah, he's just one of those steady guys. You know, a big play doesn't get too high. A bad play doesn't get too low. And I think you need that in your coordinators. Now, you also need coaches that, you know, can kind of, you know, really turn up and, and get on the players. But at the same time, the consistency and in his attitude, I think, has definitely rubbed off on the guys. Coach, what have you seen? Just kind of curious about the run game in the big picture. As you switch to this AVP run game, how do you feel about where it's at right now? 
I think the run game is, is going well. Um, look, we have a great group of backs, which I think is a great group, group of backs. They may not get the publicity and things like that, but between, you know, Gibby and, and Ramondre and the rest of that group, uh, I feel I feel confident about the room. Coach, how have you felt about Del Pettis so far and his fit in that safety room? Sorry, say it again. How have you felt about Del Pettis so far? Like, what have you seen from him in his fit in the safety yeah, room? Yeah, he, he's definitely uh, he's making a case for himself, um, not only defensively, but also on special teams. So that's going to be a, a hard decision there, but he's, he's doing a good job for us. Back to the quarterbacks. Can we just group the quarterback yeah. questions or something? Like it's, it's really important, it is important. It is important. Um, is it Alex's decision who the starting quarterback is? It's between Alex, myself, Elliot, and the rest of the offensive staff. I think our goal is to put the best team that we can put out there. Have so. you guys seen it all the same That's way, two right? questions. See, that's two <laughs> questions. See, now you're saying, go ahead, say it again. What's the question? No, it wasn't. It's a, um, <laughs> Is it, have you guys seen it the same way, do you think, to this point in the summer? I think so. I think, you know, look, I think anyone can see the confidence growing in Drake. Uh, anyone can see Jacoby go out here and, as a total body of work, do a good job. So um, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Another one, Phil? Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no.